So uh, um, we are almost at the total end of the event. Uh, but let's say I've listened to the talks over the last two days and I've decided to try to make a wrap up uh, about, uh, let's say, what's what's currently what a lot of people talk about and what will be uh, happening in the future of the industry and the economy, the EPI economy. So I try to gather everything into 10 lessons uh, that we can uh, learn, but actually 10 predictions that we can anticipate. And so we can be prepared. So at least if it happens, you will not discover it. You, have, you will have heard about it. And maybe at some point you will be, uh, uh, you will be prepared. So uh, I will just share my screen right now. And if you see that, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, based on, let's say, last conferences and also what I see in the industry, 10 prediction for the next 10 years in the API uh, economy. So a little bit about me. I'm, I'm the founder and chairman of API Days. Uh, I, I have been your host for the last two days. Uh, I'm also the co-author of Continuous API Management, a book that helps, uh, let's say, API program decision makers to uh, handle their 10 pillars of API lifecycle management. And then uh, also I've done some things in the space, uh, build a startup uh, uh, and also advise the European Commission on APIs. And uh, also I'm teaching uh, IT for business into uh, main European business schools. So I will just begin by a few introductions. So, you know, uh, into 2011, uh, Mark Andreessen say software, why software is eating the world. And actually this is why I wanted to say that software was the new soft power, right? Uh, uh, that's, that's the way to build empires and to conquer the world on the cultural side and on the economy side, right? But because of the last COVID-19 situation, actually Mark Anderson built another, wrote another uh, uh, paper like 2020, it's time to build, you know, software that disrupt companies and that, uh, that takes over the experience to take over the business uh, is, is not enough. It's time to build something that are resilient. And he has this idea uh, in this, talk in this uh, article and, 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 and podcast is that where was the Silicon Valley during the COVID-19? So software is not just to disrupt and to eat the world. Software is also to uh, make the world more sustainable and more make the, more, the world more resilient. And this is why uh, I will include in my prediction later. So the idea of really this software uh, change is we, you know, you know the, maybe the, the physical word, the, the classic real estate uh, motto like uh, location, location, location. And now the idea in the IT world, in the software powered world is really connection, connections, connections. And EPIs will be the technology to make these connections. So it will be actually to have the right location, the right place, but by really being everywhere. So that will be the, the goal of APIs. And this is why the marketing mix is changing we know uh, the porter diagram we, we, the four p's you know price promotion product and place actually nothing is really changing it's just a price promotion product but the place is now anywhere anywhere your data your service your value proposition your capabilities can be integrated into customer digital journeys uh, web application mobile applications internal uh, enterprise resource uh, planning system uh, internal crms uh, third-party platforms third-party ecosystems now, just APIs enable you to be integrated anywhere to achieve a reach you were never able to achieve before. And that will enable you also to have an outstanding accumulation of value because now you will not scale to your location or just to your niche uh, and to the only the platform you can integrate with. You will be able to scale everywhere on any integrated platform or any uh, third-party applications. So you will be able to achieve your maximum reach possible in the world you will be in everybody customer experience. So if you're a bank, you will be not only into your banking apps, you may be into real estate applications, into car dealing, car dealers application. Uh, you can be maybe in wedding planners application and websites to ask for a loan directly at the meeting, right? Uh, with the wedding planner uh, to uh, fund the, 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 your, your wedding uh, uh, to the right level. Uh, right, so that's 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 a big mindset change. The anywhere from one place to anywhere, and so because of that, actually the reach can be bigger. But now the distribution channels have diminishing returns. Usually, before when everybody was on desktop, you just want build one desktop app, you reach everybody. But now we have desktop, mobile, partner integration, connected device, in any integrations uh, into third parties. So now you need to reach everything. You need to reach everybody on their every different channel, right? So this is where APIs will be able to help actually, is to achieve mastering the long tail reach strategy. 
Uh, usually we reach the 80% that uh, cost 20% of the work. Now you will be able to reach the 100%. The last 20% that nobody reach, actually you will be able to reach them. And this is what will make you uh, grow faster than the other and actually compete and be able to aggregate a lot of value. Also, one, 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 uh, one other point for the introduction is that when there is data, there is a platform to be created. I don't know if you know the Roomba, you know, the, uh, the, the self-driving vacuum cleaner, uh, right? So it's a, it's a self-driving <laughs> vacuum cleaner for your home. But actually, uh, because to be sure it doesn't hit your furniture twice, he's able to actually remember the floor plan of your home. And actually, what happened? What's happened is that you know many designers at IKEA, for example, who wants to build furniture for a specific uh, uh, city, uh, like they want to know the average space, the average furniture equipment that the homes uh, have currently. And so Roomba is able to give their give them their data. So I, I really uh, I make you uh, I um, I don't want to scare you. The, the data is anonymized, but at least. Roomba is the company who has probably the more information about the floor plan in New York, right? Because they gather all the data from all the people who have Roombas and actually who vacuum clean their home all day for the last, uh, uh, I don't know, few years. So when there is data, there is always a platform to be created and to share via APIs. So it's important to remind. So APIs are also uh, part of the Lean and Agile API strategy, you know? Uh, the goal of APIs is to deliver, uh, you know, with uh, technology or data through an API team that delivers APIs, and then that will be shared to developers to build and use our applications. But before the classic app startup time to market product market fit, you know, you have feedbacks only when you launch the end user application. So it's really late, and you take a lot of risk on the user experience. But with APIs, you can actually launch the API before the end user application, and so you collect feedbacks and you generate value for the organization, but also for your ecosystem at the API level, waiting for delivering also the value at the end user application level. So that's APIs are also part to the Lean and Agile uh, development methodology. So the first prediction I want to share with you is that IT capabilities used to support the business, but actually uh, with APIs, IT capabilities become the business. So we can take this example with these companies who at some point were able to deliver directly their IT capabilities for the business. And that was actually a main business part uh, for them. So AWS uh, now it, you know, generate like $20 billion a year. Salesforce has 50% of their users, users and customers directly through APIs. Uh, eBay make $25 billion directly via its selling APIs. Uh, Stripe worth $32 billion, Twilio almost $20 billion, SendGrid was worth $2 billion acquired by, Stripe, by Twilio. So yeah, so these are were able to generate a lot of value by delivering directly IT capabilities on the market. So it's definitely a strategy uh, there. And that's actually a new model that these companies have achieved and they have, uh, they have uh, reached outstanding value. So just it comes from the Uber example, how they went from their, their monolithic architecture to their microservice architecture. But actually, it's funny to see that Uber is a technology company that's worth uh, a lot. But it's funny on the right if you see that, yeah, actually, they use third-party APIs also there, right? So Uber is a, comp is a consumer of IT-driven and uh, IT-driven capabilities, uh, APIs that are delivered by Stripe, Twilio, Sengri, Google Maps, and others. So, uh, yeah, when you're... When you're really great on the capability you deliver, they can be directly your business uh, driver and your business uh, model directly. And so this is uh, the microservice architecture of Uber that they presented, but how many of them are directly IT from others that they can just buy uh, directly and so they can they, th that they pay, right? Also, this number of uh, uh, Amazon Web Services. So Amazon Web Services has uh, more than 5,000 directly services that they deliver to customers directly for them to build uh, application on their um, uh, uh, infrastructure. So yeah, it's directly IT is the business. Internal services are actually external products for consumers to build. The second prediction is that API products will diminish in scope and they will be more able to scale reach. We said earlier that APIs are, can be integrated anywhere on any channel, on any device, on any platform. 
So that means the, the scope of the product can be lower, but, but if the rich compensate, you can build outstanding companies. So what happens is that what people call it, uh, what Stephen Wilmot called the axiom of the API economy is that company will deliver core competencies directly via APIs to others and will consume the core competencies of others directly via APIs. So just an example with two companies, I will take uh, the example especially of Avalara. But Avalara is a, it's a tax calculation system for VAT for e-commerce. So in the US, you know, you know that probably, but that when you deliver a product from a place to another via e-commerce, you have to pay the VAT depending on where, where it's delivered, not where, where it's produced. And there is actually a lot of jurisprudence. You have to follow every county, every state about their current regulations. And so Avalara is an API that enables you to check the cart of a consumer depending on its delivery address to give you the right VAT for the right products. So if we consider a value chain, it's, it's like a bolt in the car, right? It's a really, really tiny part of the value chain, but you can be a company of uh, thousands of employees directly providing this tax calculation system directly by APIs, right? And so you can be integrated in Amazon, in Alibaba, in any e-commerce website. So the scope can be reduced if the scale compensate. And the scale of e-commerce in the US and in the world is really huge. So you can have a really tiny value proposition, but actually that compensate with the scale. So the third prediction, not too, but the third prediction is that API will be the business Trojan horse for business domination. <coughs> and so uh, I will quote, uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, oh, I forget, I forgot his name, but it, it reminds me. Uh, Paul Rohan, right? Paul Rohan, who say that we're shifting from product versus product to platform versus platform to ecosystem versus ecosystem. And what does that mean? That means that, yeah, actually APIs are driving companies into building products, company building platforms, company building ecosystems, and company building infrastructure. And that, that's actually what we call blitz scaling, how you can take market position really fast Right? It's a term coined by Red Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn. How you can take market position really fast and go deeper and deeper and deeper to take deeper market positions to at some point be too big to fail and too big to lose the market. So just an example about the value chain. You know, uh, We used to go in the past from a producer-driven value chain. You know, Producer used to have infrastructure assets to own the distribution channels to deliver to customers. But what, what happens in API economy is that uh, the one who owns the customer actually will have the power on the distribution, will build their own assets, and at some point will be able to invest in its in, in own infrastructure. So, so what happens, you can check with uh, Stripe, we can check with Amazon, we can check with Salesforce, you can check with all the company we mentioned about above, like eBay or Twilio or whatever. So some companies build some tools and platforms directly to 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 uh, on different part of the value chain. But what happens is that most of the most successful one will often, often grow on the consumer side. They will reach a global uh, scale by owning the whole customer experience, like Amazon for books and on e-commerce or Facebook for uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, friends and social networking or, Ama or, or Netflix for uh, distribution of, 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 of movies, right? <coughs> And so when these startups actually have a lot of uh, traction, they begin to open APIs to, for having others to deliver their own products. So they are now a marketplace or they allow others to, to benefit from their reach and benefit from their tractions, right? And when they have their own products and they are able to deliver products to their customers, they often open new APIs, new business APIs. So now to be a full platform. Their full platform, like for example, Amazon with a Kindle or, uh, or, or Facebook at, at some point with uh, their games platform uh, that they opened in 2010, to be able to let other benefits from the audience and to deliver their own products to the whole ecosystem. And when they are platform, they still open new kind of APIs, new core APIs to be a full stack and to open their whole infrastructure. So this is one example of what Amazon did with Amazon Web Services, right? So, so again, APIs at every level of the depth of the market strategy, companies are opening APIs to be able to take over the market and, all, and, and build and be a, a full ecosystem and a full infrastructure to be sure that nobody uh, 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 takes their customers' attention, but actually they, they accumulate more and more value over time. 
Uh, next prediction, we will see a proliferation of new API technologies. We will need to manage different technology practices in every organization. So what does that mean? I don't know if you know this great XKCD uh, drawing is that, yeah, technology goes from centralization for more control to decentralization for more uh, independence and for, um, for more, uh, let's say, loose coupling evolutions. And when it's too loose coupled, uh, you need lack of governance, so we centralize a little bit more. And so at some point, it's too centralized and reopen, right? And this is actually what we see in the API technology stack with the different practices for different uh, uh, eras of, of technology. So I take an example of, of some. So we had SOAP, and then we had REST, and then we had GraphQL that some people consider kind of a, a new SOAP at some point. And we have also gRPC for microservices. So yeah, so the, the current technology landscape is evolving with the practice. On API definition and API description, yeah, we see some we see some some evolution from because we have more protocols and we need more uh, definition to uh, to adapt uh, uh, for to handle all these protocols, and even on the security and identity protocols, we were from grandpa technologies as some people call it, like OAuth two or OpenID to see uh, like uh, user managed access, OpenID Connect, OAuth XYZ, or the Fido Alliance that actually make the uh, the whole ecosystem evolve, uh, right, to add new layers of the stack. And uh, at last conference, we had uh, uh, Dick Hart, which is the founder, one of the co-founder, co-author of the OAuth specification, who was presenting the XAuth protocol as, as a new way to do uh, authorization and uh, on the web. And so what happens with this technology stack? We believe they will replace each other, but actually what happened, they accumulate. So I just took the example of the global energy consumption. You know, uh, we think we're replacing coal. Actually, no, we are just adding new energies, right, uh, uh, to the to the stack, right? So crude oil did never decreased, right? Natural gas never decreased. So actually, no energy has ever decreased. We just consume more energy of each, and we add new layers. And this is actually what's happening in the in the in the in the EPI stack, right? We add more. Most of the company who had soap services in the past are not replacing them. They're keeping them, but they're just adding new services into new technologies, right? So this is actually what we will see. And company will need to handle all these uh, technology stack together. And so they will have to have a culture of managing different practices on uh, in the same company. Next one is that the whole API lifecycle toolchain will be open sourced. So as more and more company adopt APIs, uh, let's say API products becomes more commodity. And so I took an example of some part of the API life cycle with uh, some open source products. But actually, yeah, it's not an even exhaustive, but you can see that for API design, documentation, gateways, testing, uh, monitoring and operations, uh, identity management and developer portals, there are currently uh, open source products that are able to uh, to fill the gap of uh, the technology uh, uh, landscape for with open source technologies. And again, it will be more and more uh, a strategy for vendors to open source stuff. So at some point, the whole API API stack will be open sourced, at least on the its key elements. So yeah, it's a strategy, it's a prediction for the next 10 years. So if you believe in open source, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this is coming. The next one is that we will discover APIs the same way we discover websites. So does that mean we will have a search engine for APIs? Uh, maybe not yet. Uh, we may need to have some, uh, it will, may not happen in the next 10 years, uh, but at least um, uh, if you check for some APIs, who are currently in a specific uh, uh, beta program, uh, for example, Arab Bank. So I don't know if you see here, but uh, when you type when you type this, sometimes for some requests, uh, because it's in A/B testing right now, but you see the APIs, you know, which are directly on the portal. So account information, payment, geolocation, exchange rates, product information, and calculator. So it's not it's not yet an API discoverable through. Uh, a robot TXT as the API, but at least uh, some there is a kind of a, a way using JSON LD to be able to make the API discoverable by search engines. So it's a first start, but at some point API will be discoverable with their own with directly in search engine as APIs, and probably I hope soon directly by uh, by robot. Six uh, API integration will be the first augmented, and then to be finally automated. So uh, in 2016, uh, Bruno Pedro made the, with the company at the time, Hitch, made a demo about like how you can have a Slack bot 
to discover APIs. So it's a YouTube video. You can just type uh, Slack bot uh, Hitch API assistant, and you will be able to see that actually you can ask a bot directly where to find APIs, how you can use APIs, where in the documentation you can find uh, uh, the right the right resources that you need. And he was showing that yeah, you can augment API integration by with a bot. But the next generation is actually a company that is being built by a, a famous API speaker, which is Zdenek Nemec, about autonomous APIs. So today we publish APIs, we document APIs with humans. We have humans that find, read docs, program the clients, we in, integrate the APIs to consume the APIs in applications. But soon at some point, we'll just publish APIs and API will be discovered directly by the software to be findable and consumable. So he's building superface.ai exactly for that. So uh, uh, yes, I recommend you to register for uh, uh, have early access. But yes, yeah, so just to say this is coming, and I think in the next ten years it will be it will be there uh, uh, and implemented. So uh, we will see the raise uh, of API skills as community of practice. You know, you have backend developers, you have frontend developers, uh, you have mobile developers, web developers. But who consider itself as an API developer? And this is what I wanted to share with you here is that, yeah, uh, we have new skills for new API skills. So developers, API designers, API product managers, owners, API architects, lead engineers, API ops, API evangelists, head of API. So all these new roles are actually will become like full featured skills and will be recognized as a specific skills as part of the, the stack. So some developers would say, at some point, I'm not front end, I'm not, I'm not back end, I'm just API developer. I understand REST, GraphQL. I understand um, the relationship between the front end, back end, and how to build back end for front end. I understand OAuth. I understand uh, OpenID Connect, right? So that's really the, the ideas. And again, there are more and more conferences who talk about APIs, and that that drive this community of practice to be recognized as a as a standalone community. The seven, the data regulation will be API supported, then to be API driven, to be just APIs. So uh, as we said uh, yesterday, uh, developer experience is actually enabling customer or user experience, right? So at some point, the regulation, the LEX, like law in Latin language, the LEX will be, or LEX, will be here to enable DX, that will be here to enable CX, right? Or UX, right? So that's really the idea of the regulation. So the regulation needs to understand that. And so we've seen a first uh, wave of regulation that directly involved APIs like Open Maki UK, PSD2, HL7 of Fire for healthcare. And we have the talks about that last, last day. And now we see GDPR, California Consumer Privacy Act, as data regulations that directly talks about personal data and the fact that they need to be in machine readable format directly to the user. And so we see a first, a first uh, uh, feeling that at some point government will have APIs directly implemented as the way to enforce the law. And uh, Dimitri Van Hess, who spoke at API Days two years ago, explained us how the governments actually had to standardize open API specification to have APIs directly implemented in, in, the, in the law of the, uh, their environmental act. So uh, eighth, the technical contract and legal contract will merge. That's actually the following of the previous one. But just an example, it's La Parisienne, which is a French insurer. They only serve APIs at their contracts. So you cannot, the policy is directly delivered by APIs. So the policy, the, the contract, and the APIs are linked there and they are the same thing, right? So that's a big game changer. Uh, that's really a big game changer because they say, yeah, policies, the future of policies are APIs. So this is what we call sometimes Ricardian contracts, where in the legal prose contract, is also a structured language contract. So the natural, langu natural language and machine-readable language actually are the same thing at some point. And so what happens is maybe the API description document can be, if you add some legal part, can be also the legal term of services. And so we'll be able to enforce the API contract and the legal contract in the same time. What does that mean? That means, you know, that code is law and law is code. And actually, that, that, that's a project that I've started in 2013 in only Swedish law called the Swedish API license. But if we make it a little bit more machine readable, we will be able to achieve that. Right. So that's that's also coming. Uh, right. So API uh, technical contract and API legal contract to be uh, together. Last two uh, for the last two minutes I have. Uh, API will be indistinguishable from humans. So what does that mean? Is that 
uh, yeah, sometimes we call our technology AI, but actually it's uh, making a mechanical turk. There is a humans behind it, right? So what does that mean? Is that, yeah, maybe machine learning stands from manual labeling, right? Uh, yeah, so that's that's the really idea. So maybe the AI, we think it's AI, is actually people behind the, the scenes, right? And so what happens? So I don't know if you know this Kiwi bot. It's a, it's a kind of a remote self-driving bot right, with wheels, but actually it, they found that most of the time it's people actually driving it remotely with cameras and sensors, uh, right? So it's not the AI driven at all. It's people re remotely uh, 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 working for it. And so you can see this company in 2016, like Scale, for example, it's an API for human labor, right? And they raised 100 millions to be now the data platform for AI. So it's humans, Actually, humans are pouring the current AI, right? So we had the talk with Anand previously about the ethics, but this is actually this is actually coming. So your maybe your uh, ride share driver, right? Uh, that that you may that you may have today in the future, maybe a remote driver somewhere else in the world, watching at the camera and driving for you. So you will be just alone in the car, but actually there will be a remote driver. That's actually kind of scary, like the Kiwi box we've seen earlier. And last one, EPR will become a societal and political challenge. So Mark Boyd opened the conference with that. And yes, at some point, you will have to find exactly as we saw before with the manual labeling, are you job below the API or are you job above the API? If your job is below the API, you can be disintermediated with software. If your job is above the API, you will use software to power your work. So software will augment you. If you are below the API, software will replace you. And it's really important to understand that relation. And, and Peter Renard, the CEO and co-founder of Segment, a wonderful API company, said, yeah, at some point we could replace middle management with APIs, right? And when you can check at some point, an Uber driver, his manager who says, you will check, you will get that people from there to there, you will be paid this and, and you will have to respect that. It's an application powered by APIs, right? So it's really important to remind. The bonus one uh, that I predict is that we will reach the limits of our infrastructure. So we will invest in all flying services and APIs. So yeah, we can see the traffic, the current web traffic comes from uh, that, that actually it's really coming more from APIs than humans and more and more, and that will be the, the large majority. But actually what's funny is that sometimes when the data is too, there's too much data to transfer, Amazon Web Services have this no mobile track that actually load the data on the truck and drives the data across the US to deliver data from one place to another. Yeah, when you have petabytes, hexabytes, you know, to transfer, you cannot do that. You use over the internet like it's too much. So it's actually uh, easier to use a truck driver in a truck or a series of truck to do it. So sometimes the APIs will be not a remote worker um, do manual, doing manual labeling. Sometimes the API will be a truck driver. Uh, get, Request so you will request data to a truck driver and you will deliver you directly at the office and deliver the data. So I expect we will reach the limit of infrastructure. So that was it for me. That was my 10 prediction. Actually, it was almost 12. But so uh, maybe in 10 years, LPI will be a thing uh, because they won't be a thing anymore, right? And so nobody will talk about APIs. It will be so obvious as a mathematics in a we don't have a mathematics department. In a company, we don't have a specific reading department. In companies, it's obvious people know simple math and people read, right? And so maybe it will not have an API team because API will be so obvious that, yeah, they will be in whole company. So this is my last word until next conference. Long live APIs. And that was great to be uh, with you. Uh, just to say, to finish, uh, we will uh, get, get, we will share all the slides and uh, of, of speakers will send the slides to us. Uh, we will uh, share the videos as soon as they will be recorded. Uh, we we really want to thank the speakers that enable us to have a great uh, two days together about these APIs for legacy industries. We really want to thank the sponsors that make this event possible and that also enable this event to be uh, uh, to free and available for others, for everybody in the world uh, and especially in New York. And we also uh, want to thank you, the, the community, right, who participated to the chat, uh, participated to the questions. And, and that actually, yeah, uh, that makes the CPI industry and the CPI economy uh, resilient and, and interesting to, uh, to continue to do conference uh, together. Uh, so our next event will be API Day Singapore 
it will be uh, 26th of August, uh, right? It will be again a, a focused on APAC financial services, insurance, and and and, and banking. Uh, yeah, and you can find every information on epids.co, our website for next conferences. If you want to apply to be speaker or if you want to review past talks, uh, yeah, you can also register to our newsletter uh, on, on the website. I hope you had a great uh, event uh, there. For the people who wants to join us, uh, at least I, I will be I will be in the in the special chat uh, platform in the next minutes if you want to hang out. It was really great to build that conference together. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I see some people thanking for uh, for uh, for being part of this of this event. Uh, we'll see each other uh, next month for our next event for EPA Singapore. Enjoy your day uh, in in New York. Enjoy your night if you are somewhere else, and uh, see you at next API conference.